Jack Town, uh, related to the Jack Town Road Slide Project. Uh, on behalf of the township, KLH was able to obtain a $200,000 grant from Allegheny County Conservation District's Low Volume Dirt and Gravel Road Program. Paired with the grant that Elizabeth Township uh, has also received from the GEBTF Program through Allegheny County Economic Development. new drainage and install the tuning walls or stabilize that road and uh, get a very stable road reopening. Uh, tonight I've also passed out for all of you to have a copy of the first phase of the other four program projects. These were going to be five projects that we were tasked with designing and getting into the process before. Uh, those are the three retrofits of the cedar drive detention ponds, and then two projects at Stony, Stony Brook Development. One is at the top of Stony Brook, uh, right adjacent to the road before it goes over the hill. That's a two-cell with two-tiered rain gardens, and then there's another one at the bottom of Stony Brook, uh, adjacent to Happy Hollow. All five of these projects not only take you on the path to meet your MS4, Lines goal of sediment removal. Uh, they will also assist, not completely, but assist in the flooding issues that have been persistent in Happy Hollow for many years. Uh, KLH is also working internally on the cleaning of the Hall project. We hope to have some uh, preliminary designs and process estimates.
cross street. Okay, got it. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, hey, Mayor, when, when did you say you might be able to have the designs for that? That's not a lot now. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're thinking probably about two weeks. To get something. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next voice is Mr. Jason Sackett. I'm signing my written report. I just have three items to comment on. Um, first, in a June 13th of 2020, our fellow COG member, Jefferson Hills, uh, lost an officer on duty due to a drunk driver hitting him head on. Every year now they have a memorial blood drive in honor of that officer. And I just wanted to announce in our meeting that their uh, 2023 drive is scheduled at their Jefferson Hills Library on Sunday, June 11th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And with the board's permission, I'll, I'll hang a flyer in our common area here at the entrance to the building. Um, so it's, uh, the officer who, uh, fallen officer, was a resident here in Elizabeth Township. He was born and raised a Elizabeth Ford graduate, also a, a United States uh, veteran. So uh, more information for anybody who's interested, I'll, I'll share it and hang it here in the lobby. Uh, secondly, I'd like to just publicly thank our uh, appointed members of our Civil Service Commission, who have once again uh, guided us through another uh, process to establish a civil service list that we posted this morning. Um, President Ed Hinchy, and civil service members, um, Keith Palmer and John Sidrich, along with uh, Commissioner Walls, who sits on that board as an alternate. Uh, a lot of time uh, went into the process. We talked to a lot of people, we need a lot of data, and uh, they, again, have volunteered their time uh, later in this month to continue on with the lieutenant's process. I'm grateful for that. And then lastly, um, I want to thank uh, resident Jill Taylor. Uh, she works with a, a nonprofit in her personal life, and as of today, has donated another 36 Narcan uh, kits to the police department. Uh, as I've talked about when we doubled our canine program, uh, the war on drugs or the heroin epidemic, the epidemic is no stranger to any community. And uh, Narcan has uh, been a life-saving factor in many tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of lives. So we applaud uh, her. She's a resident of the Mount Vernon community, uh, lives on Mohawk Drive, and she's taken the time to go through the county and uh, get these extra Narcan kits to give it to the police department. It's very helpful in our mission. Thanks, Mr. Any questions for Chief? Thank you. Um, <coughs> next is Public Works. Thank you. Uh, the DPW crew completed all the work at the community center. The grass has been planted and uh, covered in the straw mat mulching. Uh, the orange fence was reinstalled to keep cars from parking on the mud and the uh, freshly uh, seeded grass. Uh, the new township community welcome signs have been delivered. Uh, we we're working on a schedule to assemble and install the signs. Uh, we were actually able to get four of them up today in the rain. So guys said they're they're going together. We just they're, they have the map and they're drawing a little sketch to try and do it in a a raft sort of method. Uh, work continues every day at the Forest Hill Slime Project. The large drainage portion of the project has been completed. Uh, we are capturing no less than 20 gallons per minute uh, of groundwater above and below uh, the slide area, uh, and that's all day long. It just flows constant. Uh, the trees have been removed from the large slide area, and work will begin as soon as possible on slide repairs. Akin Hill Engineering will meet with myself and the crew to begin to stake out the big plan uh, for the slides this week. Uh, we did meet this morning at 9 a.m. at the site and went over some preliminary um, locations. Uh, when the ground stiffens up, we'll get a, a, a stake out plan, but we're, we're well on our way to start digging. Uh, Greg, Greg Butler and myself attended the statewide PSATS conference in Hershey last week. Uh, the conference was a success. Uh, over a thousand people attend this conference uh, from across the state. The classroom sessions were very informative and definitely gave us some ideas and methods to take back to our municipality. Uh, we have dates posted on the township website for spring yard waste cleanup. That's this week, uh, May 4th and 5th. Please have all the materials out for the curb for the guys to pick up. Uh, the crews installed uh, temporary speed bumps on the roads that need to be, uh, to have the speed kept under control. And these are the same roads as last year. And uh, for complaints on the roads, potholes, and such, can be emailed to the road department or 
taught in the extension 1029. Thank you. Thanks, so. Any questions for Tom? Yeah, um, Forest Hills. Yes, sir. What, what's the timeline you think for uh, completion? Are you waiting to get that information from back now? Yeah, we need to uncover the groundwater. We've got some spring to the hillside. Okay. And he's kind of cautious. We've got to see what's underneath. The groundwater we're catching now is aggressive. I mean, it's. Yeah, it sounds like it. It's more than we could have imagined, or Jesse imagined. And every time we're digging a hole, we're finding the meat in it. So we're. It's going to go fast. We're going to start moving a lot of dirt. The, the spoils from the big slide are going to be used to fix three and one. We'll be trying to tackle all three at the same time okay. in a coordinated effort. All right. So that's right now. We're unsure. That unsure, but we're going to we're going to yeah. plow through it. Right. And then uh, just just for the public's knowledge too is uh, the website for the public on our uh, Elizabeth uh, Township website under the Public Works. Nice job on that. There's Thank a lot you. of information on there you can do. Also. Or potholes on there. Uh, yeah, as yeah, well. it, it's, it, it, it's really set up and organized very well. So thank you, thank you. and uh, tell your team thank you too. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And there's questions for Tom? Thanks, Tom. Yeah. Uh, next is Sanitary Billy. Please send the report in front of you if you have any questions or I'll answer. <clears throat> any questions for Billy? Okay, thank you. Um, next solicitor. I have nothing else on the items to be discussed in the executive session. Okay, thanks, Tom. And Township Manager, Greg. Thank you, President Flair. Uh, tonight we have a guest, uh, Lisa Everhart, and she's from Abbey Clean Ways. She's going to give us a short five minute presentation. Uh, I was contacted by them too uh, for their organization and their volunteers to clean up some of our uh, illegal dumping in the site they've located. 12 or 17, Lisa will, will clarify that when she presents. And uh, so, uh, great effort on their part. And I just suggest that she come to the meeting tonight and uh, talk to you guys about it. Okay. I did, um, I did attend floodplain manager training 32 hours. Um, I actually recorded the sessions and then I've, I've, I've watched them outside of normal work hours. So, um, there's some certifications involved in that. Just my attempt to get more updated on floodplain management for the township. Uh, we had a S&P standard and poor sanitary uh, uh, rating review that's finished, and then we're uh, heading into a uh, basically a township operations general fund review from standard and poor also. We have completed our industrial appraisal. We feel like after two years of doing this, we have a complete inventory at this point. Uh, we, uh, I'd like to thank everyone involved. We went to all the fire departments, we went to public works, police, everybody helped us with identifying assets, taking photo of assets. So we have a whole photo value insurance inventory of everything at this point. So that's easily a two and a half, possibly three year project that we just completed. So that helps us with our insurance, and that helps us with our, uh, uh, our net worth, our audits, and so forth. So that was kind of a big deal. So thank you everyone involved. Uh, with that said, um, we're also making headway on our long-term initiative of digitizing all of our records, uh, including um, and then updating our asset inventory management, which I just mentioned, and then capital tracking. I'm still working, still working on a capital uh, expenditure spreadsheet, which will turn into a plan eventually. So I'm tracking all of our current capital purchases, and then I'll have recommendations for future ones. Uh, for the for the board for future purchases. Uh, that said, I want to I want to say that I, I wanted to come to the meeting with a number, but um, Jess Gremlin and Nick Algeria, when Nick was working here, digitized. I'm going to say easily ten for your file cabinets of records, completely full. So that's tens of thousands of files have been digitized over the last year and a half. We're not going to move on to the large format prints, which obviously we bought a scanner for that about a year ago, uh, and we're getting we're moving on to that phase, and then we're going to uh, recategorize our permanent records downstairs. And at that point, uh, I think we'll be exactly where we need to be. All all records will be accessed digitally and categorized. Uh, 
Captain President, Katie Lynch mentioned the low volume road grant that we just received that did sign that contract last week. Um, Tom, that's been mentioned at the PSATS conference. I also agree it was a huge success. We went to different, he went to obviously infrastructure classes. I, I concentrated mostly on grant writing, asset management, and capital expenditure. So uh, with, with keeping in mind what I just told you is our, you know, my initiative moving forward. Very, it was my first time there, very helpful. I would hope that uh, some of us could attend in future years because it was a great learning and networking experience for sure. Uh, two more things. Uh, we, KLH, Kevin did finish a sanitary sewer system evaluation. I did submit that to PFM uh, as the final piece to our phase one assessment for the sanitary system. That was the only piece missing. So now they have everything they need. We should have a, 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 a number back from them in a week or two. And then lastly, uh, April 26th was Administrative Professionals Day, and I just want to take the opportunity to thank, um, especially, I want to thank everybody, but especially the three administrative assistants in the main office. Um, I just want the public to know that they take care of both township business and sanitary business. Uh, that's total, close to a $15 million operation. So there's three administrators. It's administrative assistance, pretty much handling every every piece of business that comes through the township, touches one of their hands for sure. They do accounts receivable, community center uh, rentals, event planning, project assistance, sewer and municipal liens, payroll, and then helps with compliance and reporting. And those are just things I wrote down five minutes ago. <laughs> they do everything. So a uh, huge, huge thank you to Joyce Kraft, Jamie Montgomery, and Jess Gromley. That's all I have. Thanks, Greg. Any questions for Greg? Okay, thank you. Uh, next committee reports. Uh, first is the Budget, Finance, Grants, and Legislation and General Government Committee. Um, myself and Greg, along with Robert Bowie, our grant consultant, attended a legislative meeting this past month, um, helping good connections towards, you know, hoping to get some of our grants approved. And then we also had a second grant uh, meeting with Bob uh, this past month also. Uh, that's it for Budget and Finance. Next is code enforcement. Uh, code enforcement did meet this month. Um, we discussed um, like condemnation payments, legacy violators. Um, there's a you know a lot of um, code issues that are in the township, and um, we're aware of a lot of them. We're just discussing uh, how Chris can move forward and addressing them. But that's it. Uh, parks and recreation. So we had a meeting scheduled last week and had to postpone it till tomorrow. So we'll be meeting tomorrow at 5 30. Perfect. Okay. Personnel? Um, <clears throat> we did not have a meeting, but we are ongoing uh, interviews right now. Public safety, public works? We did not meet. Sanitation and stormwater? Um, sanitation had a couple of meetings with KLH to discuss improvements to the two pump stations. Uh, yeah, and that's four. Um, I'm happy to say that I need to be on the agenda to the next morning on the score program. Um, we're going to be meeting as a committee to discuss the next stage of projects, which I'm going to ask Greg to put on the uh, workshop agenda. Um, from is it Lisa Everhart from the Allegheny Creek Place. Welcome, Lisa. Um, what's up? This is my name. Um, oh, I, sorry about that. Footprint. We um, picked four areas that 
17,000 volunteers, um, over 170,000 pounds of metal and recyclables, and well over 5,000 pounds of trash. So this is from our land and water-based cleanups. Um, I didn't put too many times. So just a brief um, litter versus dumping. Litter is usually small objects, single-use plastics, uh, polyester, uh, polystyrene cans, often found on roadways, walkways, trash can debris. And then if you want to say it again, illegal dumping is usually larger, hard to dispose of items, TV, housing materials. We often find these on hillsides, alleyways, abandoned, vacant lots. And then our land-based cleanups have three um, major programs. Our largest is our Dump Busters. Um, this focus on dump site remediation along those hillside alleyways, streets. This is where we get the largest portion of our trash removal. Um, with certain groups, we've gotten up to over and above seven tons of trash removed from the parks in Pittsburgh in just a three hour cleanup. Um, then we have our stairs and bridges and that removes trash and debris from the stairways, bridges, pedestrian walkways. This group pretty much exclusively works in Pittsburgh as of now, it's still pretty new. And then we have our litter blocks and our team will do a guided tour throughout a neighborhood to just pick up litter and light debris. And then that usually ends with a social hour afterwards to get to know everybody. And then this is just a very my basic um, before and after of just one of our cleanup cleanups. The goal in the end um, is not only to remove the site, but to make the site look like eyes are on it at all times to prevent future dumping. So especially with the cars in the garage, if it, there's no loose garbage, it looks like someone is maintaining those garage. So in the end, the objective is to prevent redumping. And then just a look at some of our land cleanups and the interesting things that we find in them. <laughs> if you ever come to our office, we decorate with trash. So, um, And then we have water-based cleanup. So our primary program through this is the Tireless Project. And this cleans up debris accumulated along all shorelines throughout Allegheny County. And every year we do a river of focus and we cycle between the Ohio, the Monongahela, and the Allegheny for an intensive two to three week cleanup. So our crew um, this year is focusing on the Monongahela. They will start in Genora. They live on houseboats and they will spend the next three weeks working their way back down to where all the rivers meet at the point in Pittsburgh, cleaning up trash almost every day of the week, those three weeks. Um, then we have great keepers. That is our storm drain adoption program, and that is to prevent flooding and trash from entering the waterways. This is exclusively a stewardship program, so our volunteers will adopt storm drains in their um, neighborhoods and maintain them. We will provide all the kits and all the necessary resources. Then they usually um, report their information to our database. And just a look at um, what a river cleanup can look like in the bottom left-hand corner, those are the houseboats <coughs> that our crew live on on the river, and above that is the Rachel Carson. She is our main boat that we work out of, and we recently got a new John boat that we will be adding to our fleet. And lastly is our education program. We take a notice, question, and act curriculum approach, which is uh, focusing on activities and lessons to lead a lifelong behavior and attitude change about our environment. We do both in-class and service learning experiences. Um, we were recently in West Midland High School and we have a long partnership with Presley Bridge up in the north side of Pittsburgh. Um, so we'll go into those classes and typically we'll use those two um, lessons that you see. The big picture is our Enviroscape. So it's just a mini landscape where we use um, different things to simulate trash, debris, fertilizer, and show kids how that moves throughout the landscape and inevitably lands in our water system. The smaller picture on the bottom is a little bit difficult to see, but that is our litter IQ board. Um, there's little windows with different materials in them, and the objective is to guess how long it takes for them to break down in a landfill. And then in addition to these, we also take the kids um, out on the boat on land-based cleanups to see what it's like to actually pick up garbage. And that's it. Nice presentation. Thank you. 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 Thank
Was that that vehicle in the township? Um, Any specific programs here, or just? Yeah, that would be predominantly our dump buster program. Um, so the Jefferson Regional Foundation is sponsoring our land-based cleanups. Um, so we will, um, when was it, 2017, before my time, but the organization did a county-wide assessment of all of the dump sites that we could find. And I believe we actually found up to 20 dump sites within Elizabeth Township. It is a little outdated because it is from 2017, but part of the work that we do would be to assess, which would be going from street to street, block to block, to see and find those dump sites. We do have a staff member that actually lives in Elizabeth Township, so she um, is bringing us some of those community connections too and knows where we can start working. Okay. And James, this brings up, we were looking to plan a community cleanup day. It's gonna be amazing. We know a date yet? May 22nd? Okay. <laughs> Great, we were just actually, uh, last Saturday, we were at Clareton cleanup day too. So we hosted a um, litter walk in the neighborhood while public land was going around picking up that hard to dispose of material. I think in 2022, we did Renzi Hill. And how many garbage bags, contract bags we get filled with? Yeah, just, just on Renzi Hill, so. <laughs> Yes, I hope it will be a good community uh, turnout this year, and uh, we can really, you know, make it that in the house. That would be great. And we do work. Um, we love volunteers. The more volunteers, the merrier. But even if we don't have volunteers with us, we our crew still goes out. We have two-person crews that will go out typically Thursday through Monday. Um, I think we're up to six land-based cleanups a week in that span. Oh, wow. So we will be out. May 22nd. May 22nd. Well, um, here. Would anybody have a problem if we asked her to share some information with Greg and post on our website yes, like for Greg. volunteers? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and any questions you have, um, just let me know. We do like to keep the law enforcement as well, like aware of us too. Um, we have trucks, everything with our logo, but it, it does happen that we kind of show up and we look a little sketchy to walk in through. <laughs> um, so we do get people that call just because they don't know who we are. So we, we've been working on vehicles in similar scenarios. So if you run into something that you feel the challenge, or just let us know. We'll come out that day and we'll get out of there the same day. Great. Give us a call. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Is there any questions? Yeah. Well, this is just a comment for your first presentation. That was pretty awesome. Thank you. And uh, there are multiple dump sites, as you know. Uh, I'm sure that uh, Chris House, our credit waiting officer, might be able to help you with addresses. Uh, there are certainly some people on the board and many people in this room that have a similar idea. So uh, if you guys know of a dump site, please turn it into the township. This will go on that list. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal <coughs> opportunity for Elizabeth Township. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Greg has my email, so feel free to share that around. So yeah, she approached, Melissa approached, approached me like two, two, three days ago, I think. No, it wasn't that long ago. Friday, maybe. Uh, and I just wanted to introduce her to, to the board. Um, she did, some, like, legally, I wanted to talk to the Solicitor Service about, you know, they have a waiver form for volunteers. Mm -hmm. We'll cover all that, of course. Um, and Tom, there, there might be a little bit of help with public works, of course, we'll discuss that too. But Tom was a great opportunity and uh, you did do a great job. Thanks for coming tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, next is public comment. Uh, Janet Rosslin. Thank you. As you know, if you could state your name oh. and address for the record, thank you. Uh, my name is Janet Rosslin. And I own property at 1400 Round Hill Road in the township. Um, as you know, the fourth and final hearing for the um, Olympus Energy Hyperion Midstream Compressor Station was, <clears throat> was on March 20th. And um, at that point, uh, there was 45 days for the gentleman to make a decision regarding this permit. And we, objectors and the applicant, um, had until the 14th of, of March, um, of April rather, to submit findings of fact. So 
Um, again, having no law background, I started a new program of learning, how to do findings of fact, which you will all see the results thereof. Um, and as I was doing this, I was, I'm also a subscriber to the Montanelli Independent, and on Friday, April 7th, lo and behold, Around the Valley had the following article, Groundbreaking Saturday for New Mount Vernon Courts. And there I discovered that the Elizabeth Township Board of Commissioners and the Elizabeth Forward Youth Athletics have joined forces with Olympus Energy to construct two basketball courts and three pickleball courts on something that was determined to be an eyesore <clears throat> in Mount Vernon. Um, the leadership of this, in part, was provided by Commissioner <coughs> Chris Toma, who is an assistant president of the Elizabeth Forward Youth Association. And in the end, uh, of this basically what we have is a three-way partnership between the Youth Association, the Township, and Olympus Energy. As I was doing my finding of facts, I'm reading this, knowing that a decision is in the future about a rather substantial Olympus Energy Hyperion Midstream project. And I said, that's rather unseemly in terms of appearance, actually. Um, I took a look at what the contribution was from Olympus Energy, and it was tens of thousands of dollars. And it is somewhat, again, may I say, unseemly. And so, uh, in the meantime, though, I was very busy trying to figure out how to do findings of fact, which is part of things one might think. And on the very day that my findings of fact were due, lo well and behold, here you all are, in partnership with Olympus Energy. Olympus Energy, who has contributed tens of thousands of dollars to this project. Um, what I want to tell you is, I don't know, and I'm not saying in any way, that I know the hearts of men, but I can tell you what can be gleaned from the appearance of your performance, and that is that Olympus is afforded an undue influence on a pending decision is what it looks like. So Jen, you just have her for a second. So there was kind of this quote there, Olympus Township did not meet with Olympus about that. EFYA approached the township about donating, which we discussed in um, or workshop meetings. EFYA approached Olympus separately, two separately, I mean, I'm telling you for a fact, it was not the commissioner and Olympus together. It was, I know, I know it's I, 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 I understand what I said. I'm just saying, we specifically made sure those were two separate things. EFYA approached them directly, not yes. Elizabeth Thompson Commissioner. No, so although a commissioner of the EFYA apparently or could have approached them and certainly was involved. But the key word here is partnership with a company who has donated tens of thousands of dollars. And again, I'm not saying I know the hearts of men. I'm saying what the appearance of men's behavior that is to say specifically yours, looks to the outside world and it indicates a suggestion That's that there could be fact here. The fact is that was done from EFYA, that was not done from Elizabeth Township, so. I see your pictures. I'm telling you your appearance. I know. And it's just the appearance. That's okay. Okay. Thank you. P.S. Roundhill Road and Douglas Run near the future possible proposed compressor station does have a trash heap. Next, Emil Bjerg. I'll pass because I'll talk on the end of both of them. You're going to this, 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 this is your chance. If you're going to talk, this is your chance. I won't be able to speak to you. No. This is it. This is your chance. <laughs>
Ford Township or any of the others, the state and federal government. Despite the exaggerated claims and complaints by the opposition to the gas industry activities, there has been only positive results. One of them is what we you heard talk about, the uh, youth association. There has been only positive results. Like, like the Clint Eastwood movie, there has been no good, there's been all good and no bad and ugly involved with Elizabeth as far as the doctrine. As, a, as an example, if not for the royalties and fees paid by the gas industry to Elizabeth Township, we would have to have, have had a tax increase in 2022, and I don't think any commissioner would disagree with that statement. <clears throat> Only the commissioner, Greg Butler, are aware of this fact. I only know of, there's 13,000 residents in Elizabeth Township, and only about five or six people that I personally know know about that one three quarter million dollars that the township received, and it, it, it uh, eliminated the tax increase in 2022. Elizabeth Township, check Elizabeth Township surely know this, but do not speak to the positive. All, all they want to talk about is the negative and the, uh, you know, the bad things that supposedly the gas industry is doing in Elizabeth Township. And I just want to mention, just in relation to what this lady just said, I am not a paid lobbyist for the gas industry and am not supported by a pro-energy law firm and as protect Elizabeth Township is by eco-terrorist law firms. Thank you. Thanks, Al. <laughs> uh, next is Patty Hoffman. You are <laughs> Patty Hoffman, 408 Duncan Station. I don't know if any of you have paid, have paid any attention to Things are going on with gas and pressure stations at the moment. Uh, since the beginning of this year, we have one that has had two uh, separate times that it had gas releases, and the people in the area are getting sick with all kinds of cancers and lung disease. We have also just had, in Mississippi, a lightning strike. It hit the gas line, backed up through the compressor station, and made a nice explosion. So no matter how much we think they aren't hazardous, they are hazardous. We can't control nature and things do happen. Very sadly, I'm, I'm uh, assuming that you're not going to pay attention to the fact when you're making these decisions that you should have been paying attention to the comprehensive plan, which you in no way, shape or form have been following to this point through the Herald Police, and I'm hoping you're going to pay attention to it for here because it is not what the people of this community ask for. And I'm hoping that you're going to pay attention to the fact that we have a shall have the most restrictive policies in place on anything that we do in this township. And again, if you did not pay attention to it on the Herald Police, I'm hoping you're gonna pay attention to it here. I'm going to talk to, to Chris and I'm going to ask you to do something, Chris, because in the past, every time they voted on anything to do with the FYA, you abstained. And as the assistant president, I think that you should abstain on anything right now just because of appearance with Olympus Energy to this point. So I commend you for doing that in the past and I'm hoping that you will do that now. Um, we did not, through all of these commissioners meetings, Chris did not come to us and say, hey, I'm going to Olympus Energy and I'm going to get $80,000. Would we have liked that? I wouldn't because it makes me feel really queasy to think of the fact that that's where it is. I used to be part of the MBYBA board, so I know what it was started out to be and I know how important it is and I am all for things that happen in the township that promote us, promote reputation, and promote the people of the township. But again, Chris, I'm hoping to you from a board member previously to a board member now, and what you've done in the past, I'm hoping that you will recuse yourself 
tonight on this night. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. I just wanted to say um, there were um, a couple of allegations of conflict for Commissioner Telma in during the hearings as well. Um, I've talked with him about that and investigated those matters, and there's nothing under the Pennsylvania Ethics Act that would require him legally to abstain. Well, there's one thing that um, the, if you can't um, profit from anything. You can't have a pecuniary benefit to yourself, right. a family member, or a business or a teacher business. associated. And, and the, so this vote tonight on the compressor station would not be a pecuniary benefit to Chris. It's, it would be as assistant president. Yeah, it, it doesn't. The compressor station vote does mm -hmm. not is not a pecuniary benefit to Chris, a member of his family, or a business person associated. It's still with this energy, and I'm asking Chris, and, and you might say it doesn't have, just, he I doesn't mean, have to, I but if, if, if he is, is I he a stand-up person, he will. I want to make it clear on the record. I know you're asking him. I'm just making it clear on the record what my legal opinion is. So that's all. Thanks, Ben. Alyssa, did you want to speak, or did you put your name down for your presentation? That was my presentation. That's what I figured. Thank you. Um, <laughs> next is Nick Hanrath. And Tanner, right, sir. Yeah, I'd love to talk about Dylan there, but um, I just think if, right. if you could state your name and your address for the record. Yeah, Nick Tanner, 531, 551, and 556, doing those stuff. I just want to talk to you guys about what I, I brought up before about John and his daughter and all, and about like when you got to turn his house down, the sewage. I mean, Greg had a good conversation about this a couple weeks ago. I, mean, you got, I know you guys are all busy and overwhelmed, but it's, you, it's easy to forget when you don't write it down. But you turn the houses down, and then you don't you don't get rid of the sewer tax. So right now you're turning what 35 houses down in the township. Spend the extra 500 dollars to the sewage because no one wants to buy the loss because you still have to you still have to pay for the sewage on it. So you get 35 houses, you turn them down, no one wants to buy them because now you're still spending 50 dollars a month on sewage. So it's like well, there's no reason to buy the property. But if you if you cap, cut and cap the line, if they put a house back on that lot, then they have to repay the you have to repay for it no matter what. I don't think you do. Yes, you do. Yes. Yeah, so why not just cap it? Because it's a fee, it's dumb. It really is. So if you cap it now, then <coughs> right now, on 30, like I say, there's 20 houses in Union, you're going to tear down. No one's going to buy them. The town's going to have to pay to cut the grass on stuff, which I'm usually the one to drive around in my tractor cutting the grass because nobody wants to cut the grass and it's lots. So it's my kind of lot stuff. And it's like, I don't want to buy these. It's 10 watts, I cut all the time, and it's 500 watts a month, uh, plus I'm on clock to pay for sewage. The lines will be capped. Now they will be? They're always capped. They're always capped. But you still have to pay for sewage on it. Like the water right now, we're, I put that garden in for all me and my neighbors and all that stuff. So if I want to buy that and see me and him, we're the only ones that can buy it. So you still have to pay $51 a month in sewage on it. Uh, no, you don't, have, you don't have a house. There's no residence. It doesn't matter if it's a pass in the ground still. Uh, I that 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 my it's totally misunderstanding. If the house is torn down, that tap is not worth it. It's not worth it. You don't have to pay. It's you. My buddy Alex bought property down here, down here in Vista, and he's paying $51 a month for sewage. There's no house. It's a house that burned down back in 2019. Yeah, there's an ordinance. If you look in the ordinance, you have to, if you cut and cap the line and, you, and we go out and inspect it to make sure it's cut and capped, then he won't get billed. Exactly. He needs to bring that forward if that's the okay. case. Maybe there's a disconnect from the time of the demolition and, and it just didn't get through the building. Yeah, there's no incentive for people to buy the lot. If they're going to spend $3,000 on the lot and then spend $1,500, it's happening and all that stuff. You'll find we have a new redevelopment authority that we're just starting up and you'll see that people will buy those lots. Yeah. They don't have to pay the sewer tax. So. Yeah. yeah, that was bringing up again because there's a lot of properties. What's the address of your friend? What's your friend's address? You know, so tell him how after me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. yeah. 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 No, no, just saying, there's no house in the town's been cut off. He, he should be paying any. That's my theory about it too, but he, he's three years old now, and that's, you're talking $1,500 each time. Yeah, get with Tom after me. Thanks, Nick. Yep. Um, next is Kathy Bursick. <laughs> or Kate, I'm sorry, Kate Bursick. Um, I will just go to request. 
about my request for Chris to recuse himself, but thank you for looking into it and explaining it. Um, and thanks to the commissioners for listening to us throughout the process. Thank you. Um, next is Russell Verena.
the land that you're putting well pads on, houses can't be put there. You put that well pad right by the high school. That would have been a perfect place for a plan of houses because it's right there on 51. Real close access, that's what people want. But you guys are going this other path, you know? My dad likes to use analogies a lot. You just heard it. So in life, we often come to a problem. We have two options. We have the easy path we can take, or we have the hard path. You know, the easy path, you get some, you know, help a lot, like, immediately, but you get some, uh, it's, uh, you get some relief immediately, but ultimately down the road, your problem's worse than it was when it first started. The hard path, it's hard. You gotta put time in, you gotta do things the right way, and then you come out on the other side of that rock. You guys, I feel like you guys are taking the easy route when you're going down this well path. You know, and he could talk about loyalties to the school district. They got 12 acres, they got 3,000 per acre in their advance, 36,000. What's their budget? Double the size of yours. I'm sorry, but that's nothing, buddy. You know? So their loyalties on 12 acres ain't gonna do anything for them. So, you know, what do we get an impact piece? 50 grand? You know, 60. If, the, if these well pads were so great, you guys just put out a newsletter. I don't see one mention of these well pads there. If you guys are so proud of it, put it out there and say, hey, we're doing this. You can put Abel and this dude on it. And you can talk about all the great stuff that you guys are getting with these well pads. And, and communicate it to the township. Just be open and honest. But I'm telling you guys, you guys got to start building houses and get people to move back to this township. I drive through Jefferson Hills. Guess what they're doing? They're building houses. They ain't building well pads. Look at Ross Draper. They just turned down one. And they're building houses. They're building houses right down here at Cedar Creek, and they're building another one right off of 70. We're not doing anything. Thanks, sir. Okay, next are items for consideration, non expenditure <laughs> items, either consent votes. Uh, first is motion to approve the commissioner's meetings minutes dated April 3rd, 2023. So moved. Can I get a second? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the ayes have it. Next, motion to set a condemnation hearing for Monday, May 15th, 2023 at 5.30 p.m. for multiple properties within the township. Can I get a motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the ayes have it. Next motion to reapprove the subdivision from Vasco Howe to create two parcels from lot 999-R-41 for conveyance. The property exists in a B2 zoning district. Can I get a motion? I'll make that motion. Can I get a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the ayes have it. <coughs> Next motion to Reapprove the subdivision from Thomas Heinrich to create two parcels from the existing parcel numbers 1269 D 142 and 1269 D 131 for possible future conveyance. The property exists in an R2 zoning district. Can I get a motion? So moved. Can I get a second? second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the ayes have it. Okay, next expenditure items. These are roll call votes. Motion to approve the Township Bill Warrant dated May 1st, 2023 in the amount of $485,504.43. Can I get a motion? So moved. Can I get a second? Second. Great. Roll call vote. Commissioner Kane? Yes. Commissioner Walk? Yes. yes. Commissioner Campus? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Benedict? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. yes. As a employer? Yes. Okay, next motion to approve the sanitary bill warrant dated May 1st, 2023 in the amount of $646,814.64. This amount includes payments for sanitary bond 2012, sanitary bond 2019A, and sanitary bond 2019B. Is there a motion? So moved. Can I get a second? Second. Great, roll call vote. Commissioner Kane? Yes. Commissioner Walk? Yes. Commissioner Campus? Yes. Uh -huh. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Benedict? Yes. Commissioner Selma? Yes. President Boyer? Yes. Uh, for item number seven, I would ask for a motion to approve the conditional use application and advance land development application for 
from Hyperion Midstream LLC for the Champion Compressor Station subject to the following conditions. Hyperion shall be required to submit a separate grading permit application prior to earth moving. Hyperion shall be required to obtain a burn building permit and certificate of occupancy as appropriate for its use. Hyperion shall be responsible to pay the township's reasonable attorney fees and engineering fees and expert costs for in connection with the conditional use application to hearing process. Hyperion will provide on-site orientation and training of first responders prior to startup of the compressor station. Hyperion shall provide verification that it has received all permits and other written approvals required by DEP and other state or federal regulatory agencies prior to constructing or conducting oil and gas operations. Hyperion must submit updated certificates before the expiration of current policy and future policies showing coverage meeting this section 607-1B3. PennDOT shall establish and PennDOT shall establish and review minimum traffic site distances as part of Hyperion's HOP submission. Hyperion shall ensure that Thompson streets utilized by them, as well as their contractors, shall remain free of dirt, mud, and debris. Hyperion shall ensure construction of oil and gas operations shall comply with the Pennsylvania UCC. The operator must review Hyperion must remove all rubbish, construction materials, and all debris in a prompt manner and in the interest of public safety. Hyperion shall ensure that no permanent structure shall be erected in a height in excess of 50 feet. The maximum level height of structures during construction shall be determined by the Township Commissioners. Hyperion shall place warning signs as appropriate on fences surrounding the compressor station, providing notice of potential dangers and contact information in case of emergency. When constructing a compressor station, the natural surroundings should be considered and attempts made to preserve existing trees and native vegetation. Russian trees shall not be cleared by way of burning, except in the manner that complies with the township's ordinances. Hyperion shall install a veg vegetative buffer, including trees, on the northeastern and southwestern sides of the property as approved and as approved by the township commissioners. Hyperion shall ensure that the noise generated by the compressor station shall not exceed 60 dBA at the nearest property line of residence or in public building, school, medical emergency, or any other public facility or 100 feet from the nearest residence, public building, medical emergency, or other public facilities, whichever point is closer to the affected residence or public building, school, medical emergency, or other public facility. Hyperion shall continuously monitor the noise and provide access to those reports to the township. Hyperion shall have uh, provide a standard resident complaint procedure with a template and complaint forms. Hyperion shall ensure that no construction activities are performed except between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Hyperion shall ensure that there will be no truck traffic relating to construction activities during school bus hours. Hyperion shall utilize the Township Police Department for traffic control relating to construction activities. Hyperion shall ensure that right of way entry is granted to the Township compliant with Section 6089. Hyperion shall water the gravel portions of the access road when conditions required at active, during active construction. Hyperion will repair and replace any township road that is marked where damage is caused by Hyperion vehicles or equipment. Hyperion shall supply the township with copies of all environmental air quality monitoring reports received from the Allegheny County Health Department or any other agency. Prior to construction and operation of oil and gas operations, Hyperion shall retain an air quality expert as agreed upon by the township to implement an air quality monitoring sampling plan for BOC's PM 2.5 and met and submit that plan to the township. Prior to construction and operation of the compressor station, Hyperion shall use the air quality expert in order to establish by generally accepted testing procedures the environmental air quality level at the nearest property line of a residence, public building, school, medical, emergency, or other public facility, or 100 feet from the nearest residence, public building, school, medical, or emergency, or other public facility, whichever point is closer to the effective residence or public building, school, medical, emergency, or other public facility. Hyperion will continuously monitor the environmental air quality Hyperion shall provide access to those reports to the township. Hyperion shall supply the township with copies of all water quality monitoring reports received from the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection or any other agency. The township shall receive timely notification if an ESME emergency shutdown occurs. The township shall receive timely notification if any major flare event occurs. Hyperion will provide a copy of its air permit from the Allegheny County Health Department and comply with the requirements of that, that permit. Hyperion will be limited to no more than two compressors, not exceeding 1,875 horsepower each at this location. At no time will Hyperion expand or seek to expand beyond two compressor stations, not exceeding 1,875 horsepower for, the, for this site. This restriction is binding on Hyperion and successors and assigns. Hyperion may operate at a higher horsepower limit for each compressor only by submitting a written request to the township and after receiving formal approval by the township commissioner. Hyperion will only utilize new equipment for the compressor station. Hyperion will not purchase, use, or aftermarket equipment for the compressor station.
Township Commissioner shall provide additional feedback on selected transportation routes. Hyperion shall utilize any truck route suggested by the Township Commissioners. Due to the location of the compressor station and the poor cell reception and lack of reception at or near the location, and due to general concerns about the facility, Hyperion will purchase or reimburse the Township the following 12 handheld, handheld digital radio radios for use by the Township Volunteer Fire Departments and two ballistic slash light shields. That asks for a motion and second. So moved. Second. Great roll call. Or any discussion? Um, <clears throat> just a brief one. <clears throat> so Matt did research uh, through the Ethics Commission and found that there's no <coughs> conflict of interest here for In my legal Cummins. opinion, there, Commissioner Cummins does not have a conflict of interest because this particular vote to approve the compressor station will not benefit himself. The immediate family member as defined by the ethics act. And is, it not, is it not true also that since there is no conflict that he has a duty to vote? He should vote, he can't abstain. That's he, what he I'm saying. Great, roll call vote. <clears throat> Commissioner King. Yes. Commissioner Walker. Yes. Commissioner Campus. No. Commissioner Walls. Yes. Commissioner Benedict. No. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. President Boyer. Yes. Number eight, motion to authorize Haywood Refrigeration Services to install a furnace and air conditioner unit in building number two at the community center at a cost of $8,400. Can I get motion? So moved. I get second. Second. Great, roll call vote. Commissioner Kane. Yes. Commissioner Walk. Yes. Commissioner Campus. Yes. Commissioner Walls. Yes. Commissioner Benedict. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. President Blair. Yes. Number nine, motion to authorize Haywood Refrigeration Services to install a mini split and heat pump air conditioning unit in building number three at the community center at a cost of $8,500. Second motion. So moved. Second. Second. Comment. Sure. Um, so moved. Mr. Haywood and I had a discussion about this last week, and this would be the higher end of the two solutions to building three. Uh, building three, as we all know, has a uh, Air conditioning unit that's not too bad, but that big room can handle the ones that were caught outside. Um, I'm not sure I didn't see this particular request before they were put on the agenda, but I also talked to them about uh, installing three power fans in that big room as well, which would really, really, really help. Hey, Greg, do you know, was any of that included in this? The fans were not. The, the lesser version of the air conditioning was $100 difference, I believe, but okay. I don't know why. All right. We split those in that. So. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, he's going to have all his equipment there with big ladders, so now is the time. Well, I'll do that by resolution. Okay, roll call vote. Commissioner King. Yes. Commissioner Walker. Yes. Commissioner Campus. Yes. Commissioner Walls. Yes. Commissioner Benedict. Yes. Commissioner Toma. Yes. President Boyer. Yes. Number 10, motion to authorize Haywood Refrigeration Services to install a mini split air conditioning unit in the Township Manager's office at a cost of $4,200. Take a motion. So moved. Second. Roll call vote. Commissioner King. Yes. Commissioner Walk. Yes. Commissioner Campus. Yes. Commissioner Walls. Yes. Commissioner Benedict. Yes. Commissioner Toma. Yes. President Porter. Yes. Number 11, motion to ratify the vote from April 18, 2023. To hire seasonal employees at a rate of eighteen dollars per hour. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, we had originally had fifteen dollars an hour, and decided to raise it to eighteen to try to get more candidates. So uh, roll call vote. Commissioner King. Do you have that password? Oh, sorry. Do we advertise? Yes, we do. I think we have four or five applications. Five. Four. four. And, and one. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Great. So it was five more than last year. Ah. Commissioner Campus, it was also in the newsletter too as well. So they advertise it online. Okay, roll call vote. <coughs> Commissioner King. Yes. Commissioner Walk. Yes. Commissioner Campus. Yes. Commissioner Walls. Yes. Commissioner Benedict. Yes. Commissioner Toma. Yes. President Boyer. Yes. Number 12, motion to approve the payment of pay application number one to rec crew demolition in the amount of $19,450. This payment is for the completed grant funded demolitions of the properties at 2073 and 2094 Smithville Road. Can I get a motion? So moved. I get a second. Second. Roll call vote. Commissioner King. Yes. 
Yes. Commissioner Watt? Yes. Commissioner Campus? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Mesnick? Yes. Commissioner Thoma? Yes. President Boyer? Yes. Number 13, motion to authorize KLH engineers to begin surveying design on the Jacktown Road slide repair project. These costs are supported by grant funding. Can I get a motion? Second. Can I get a second? Yes. Sure. Roll call vote. Commissioner King? Yes. Commissioner Walk? Yes. Commissioner Campbell? Yes. yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Benedict? No. Commissioner Toma? Yes. President Boyer? Yes. Number 14, motion to authorize KLH Engineering to begin plans and specifications for five phase one MS4 construction project. Can I get a motion? I'll make that motion. Take a second. second. Yeah. Roll call vote. Commissioner King? Yes. Commissioner yeah. Watt? Yes. Commissioner Campus? Yes. Commissioner Walsh? No. Commissioner Benedict? Yes. Commissioner Toma? No. Uh, I'm sorry, yes. Sorry. Yep. President Boyer? Yes. Okay, number 15, motion to purchase a server for the police department at a cost of $7,115 from Shiloh Services. The current service end of life is October 2023. Can I get a motion? So the, I guess I can roll call vote. Hold on. Discussion. Uh, this funding, is that, where's that coming out of? Uh, the IT, the IT line, I, general, I general fund. For general fund IT? Yes. For the police staff computers? Uh, yeah, we, we consolidated it all. Last year we separated it. Oh, well, I don't know. It's all one. All right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Roll call vote. Commissioner King? Yes. Commissioner Walk? Yes. Commissioner Campus? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Benedict? Yes. Commissioner Toma? Yes. President Floyd? Yes. I get those in the Well, can, can I? So we had a lot of difficulties with our communications with the phones and that. Has that since been, like, can people know that? So do you? Yeah, I can explain. I do, first and foremost, apologize for that. If you've been trying to get hold of us at the, at the main office, uh, the police were not affected, public works was, and our sanitary treatment plan was. Um, there, to make a long story short, we switched services to save money, which was great. Uh, the problem was is the Comcast discontinued our service sooner than they were supposed to. And we couldn't get to them to re, to re, uh, you know, re uh, ignite or reactivate it. So we just uh, started making a lot of phone calls and they've been bringing it up little by little. We do have, we do now have lines open to the office, public works is I think going? Yes. Uh, yeah, yes. good? Yes. Sanitary on Friday was good, so we're almost there. I don't, still think we don't have voicemail and we still have a couple hunt through menu options that are still out of whack, so we're close. Thank you for your patience. Motion to adjourn now. Okay. Uh, President Porter, are we going to continue our meet um, discussion with KLHF? Yes. Okay, thanks everyone.